So BAM in the design process, and specifically how BAM is changing the process, is changing the decisions that are made, and also the capabilities that you can do as far as calculation and design. So first, let's understand the workflow and how the workflow is changing now compared to CAD. There's this idea of modelers versus drafters. In the past, the drafter was somebody who would take lines on a piece of paper, and as long as the lines in the computer matched what was on the paper, you had a good drafter. You know, you see one thing and it looks like the other, perfect, you're all set. Well now, as soon as the modeler gets into a model and they've got lines that they need to put into that model, you no longer have a collection of lines that represent things, but you have a collection of objects and entities. So before you can even draw the box, you need to know what it's mounted to. You need to know, you know, they, the CAD drafter might just know that it's a set of lines, but it might be a light fixture that's wall mounted that might have light information in it. It might have to have a, a mounting height. And some of this information needs to be known before you can even start putting the lines on the drawing. So this has led to this idea of a modeler, someone who understands the system a little bit more. It also has led to some of the designers and engineers actually getting into the model and designing in the model. So in the past, you'd have the engineers looking at um, sections, elevations, and making these design decisions and redlining out the paper. Now, especially in the early phase of the project, you might actually have the engineer or designer in there making those decisions based on the geometry that they see. They might see the ceiling height is different than what was expected, but they can see all that in one model without having to reference lots of different documents. And then the modeling effort over the life of the project has changed as well. There's increased modeling time that is required up front to put this information into these entities while you're starting the design. So because of this, your design development phase drawings might actually be lighter, or you're going to have to have more time set aside up front to complete this design development phase drawing because it does take more modeling time, more information to be put in that model up front compared to CAD. And then there's the idea of front-end coordination. This is not only moving some of the coordination from the design phase to earlier in the design phase, but there's also been a shift of moving some of the construction coordination into the design phase. Now with a 3D environment, you can do the 3D coordination and see how things are located with reference to each other and you can also resolve conflicts early in the design that may not have even been noticed until the construction phase. And then parametric documentation. This has been hit on a little bit by, by Brian, but parametric comes from the word parameters, where each element has information associated with it. It knows where it is and what it is and how it connects to different systems. And then you can, you can actually view all this information in schedules. So you can search the schedules, you can organize it in schedules, and be able to see the, how the, the building element models um, are in the model. So previously you've got this CAD workflow where you had symbols and you had information and they were stored separately. So we'll take a, a light fixture for example. I, I'm in a light fixture, I'm not forgiving. But these, the, the concepts apply to anyone. But if you had a light fixture, you would put it on your drawings then you might put a label on it to say what its name was, what type it was. You might have a keynote associated with it, all this information. And let's say you have the same light picture on multiple sheets. You would copy that information and you would paste it onto multiple sheets. Well, if you need to change the name of that light picture, if you need to change the wattage, if you need to change um, the note, you would have to change it in every location that it was referenced. With a parameterized model, now you have symbol, 3D geometry, and information all stored in one place. If you want to change the name of that, that light fixture, you can either change it right there on the light fixture, and every single sheet that's in the model will be updated accordingly, since they're all referencing the same information. You can also go to a schedule, and you can search for information. I want to find a light fixture that has this property, and then you can, you can search for it, and you can locate it, have it show you in 3D where it is, or you can click on something in the 3D model or a plan view and have immediate access to all that information. They're all stored in the same place. And so this information is stored once and referenced many times. So you only have to make that change once. So you can already see where this is leading to benefits in the design. So this data in one location reduces the discrepancies that you have in drawing. So if I have 
a mechanical piece of equipment and I want to change the load, the electrical load of it, I can change it on the floor plan. I no longer have to go look on the mechanical schedule and make sure that the same change was made there. I no longer have to look in the electrical panel schedule and make sure that my loads were updated there. If I delete the piece of mechanical equipment, the quantities are going to be updated. It's already going to be showing me you know, that it no longer exists in the mall. It's already going to be taken out the schedule. Its load is already going to be taken out the electrical schedule. So all of this is all shared information. Again, one place reducing the discrepancies. And then if I want to rename it, I can rename it on the schedule and the, the labels on the plans will automatically match or I can renumber them and the labels on the plans are no longer going to be out of sync. And then one of the most obvious benefits that BAM presents to us is the idea that we can visualize this now. This 3D visualization. So this video that you're seeing here at the bottom shows how you can isolate you know, one particular area of the building, in this case a chiller and boiler room. You can rotate it, you can see that things are mounted at the correct height, you can see how things are connected to each other. You can click on elements and you can see the parameters that are associated with them, the information that's associated with them. And you can verify that things are connected exactly how they would want to be. So visualization is a huge benefit of being able to, to do this in a building information model. And because everything is now in 3D, you also have the ability to coordinate multiple disciplines. So this video down here is showing where there is actually an existing building with an existing structure, these confined spaces, but now we had to coordinate all of the mechanical, electrical, and plumbing systems, and we had to verify that they were actually going to fit in the space and that they were going to all work together. Now, what BIM has enabled us to do is to be able to have a lot more confidence in our model. Now we can actually put this stuff in there, not only in 3D, but with information on how it connects to other systems. And we can coordinate these tight spaces. We can make sure that the, the spaces are shared correctly and that everything works together with multiple disciplines. We can turn on and off the structural needed. We can turn on and off mechanical. We can design around the other systems live in the model where we're no longer having to reference multiple sheets or make sure that we're, we're referencing elevations and structural and mechanical and plumbing all at the same time. It's all together in one model. So you can actually design around those elements. And then these elements are shared between the disciplines of the trade. So the same piece of mechanical equipment is referenced, it's got both mechanical and it's got electrical properties. It might even have plumbing properties. So that same piece of equipment shows up on the electrical schedule, the same piece of equipment shows up on the mechanical schedule. So you actually are only editing one piece of equipment and electrical is connecting it to it. So it almost forces a little bit of coordination where now you've got, you're using the same piece of equipment, you're not doing a redundant you know, piece of equipment for each, for each trade. So it's automatically coordinated to some extent for that. And then you also have the ability since this is in a database, you could write some custom programming or have the ability where it will notify the electrical user when the mechanical's made a, piece, a change to a piece of equipment. So electrical will know that they need to go in there and look at it and make sure that everything is still okay electrically. And then we have various coordination tools that exist to help us do this coordination. So many applications allow you to do some sort of walkthrough or a fly through where you can you can visualize the space and move through the space. Some of them have varying degrees of usability of, of fluidity and their, their function. But this video down here at the bottom is actually a it's a video capture where we actually took a we took a BIM model and we exported it to a video game interface. And we wrote an interface around it that you can see the mouse moving. We actually use the keyboard, you might some of you might be familiar with using the keyboard and using the mouse to, to look around. You can actually turn on and off the various disciplines. You can turn off the ceilings. But the advantage here is that you, you have this ability to walk through your model in real time. You can walk into a space. You can say, does this space feel right? Do I have the right number of light fixtures? You know, you no longer have to be checking all this time, which you're going to have to do anyway in a construction uh, scenario. But you have this ability to, to live walk through this, this space. And then also, in this particular video game interface, you can actually send it out as a file, either an executable or a web interface 
where you can share it with people who don't necessarily have the BIM software. They don't necessarily have a full version of the Authoring software. They can actually use this interface no matter what type of... Well, you might have to have a nice video card, but you don't have to have that other software in there. So along with coordination tools, we have this idea of shared schedules. We already touched on the fact that you have shared elements. Now you have schedules that have both the mechanical and the, the electrical or you know, any other discipline on the same schedule where you can be looking at the mechanical and updating the electrical at the same time. So you, it's a coordination tool where you can, you can look at them at the same time. And then also, because everything is in a database together, you can also write custom applications where you can extract the data. For example, the screenshot in the upper right is from an application that I wrote that extracts all of the mechanical information and then it can automatically size the electrical disconnect, the starter size, all of that based on the equipment size, the equipment rating, um, based on you know different things like that. And then also it can generate reports and it can tell you if a breaker is oversized for the application, undersized for the application, make sure that you've got the correct wire size for the for based on the horsepower and things like that. So all of this is available now where you have all of this information coordinated in a single model. And then Clash detection, which I'm not going to get into right now. John's going to tell us a little bit more about clash detection, but the ability to see if if any of you are sharing the same space, if you've got pipes running into ducts, if you've got ducts running through structural beams, and then you want to analyze and verify your design. And this is another place where where BIM shines and gives us so many more capabilities. We have the ability to visualize things on the plant. And so on the upper right here, we have a floor plan. And what we're actually looking at is a color coding system showing us how much light is in the space, you know, what the light levels are in the space. And as was already touched on by Brian, this is live to the model. So if I add more light to that space, if I change the, the light fixture parameters or if I add a light fixture, the light level is going to change. If I delete light fixtures, it's going to get darker in there. I can see that visually on the whole floor plan at one time. This can be done for loads. You can also do it for fire ratings of walls if you want to you know, color code them or be able to show them, and it's all live. If you change the, the fire rating of a wall, you'll be able to see it real time, you'll be able to see it in a large overall visualization of the floor plan. So the next the point here is that because, again, we have this database with all of this electrical information, mechanical information, we can either export that information to third-party applications or we can write custom applications to, to run calculations on that information. And so here on the bottom we have an example where we're taking model information and we're either putting it into Excel to be able to generate different types of graphs or do custom calculations that you wouldn't necessarily uh, be able to do within the construction document or the, the Revit interface. Um, and then the, the bottom example here on the bottom right, you can actually take a Revit model, you can export all of the, uh, I'm going to use electrical code again, but you can export all the electrical information into a database in a, in a third party and then you can run fault current calculations on that information, voltage drop. You can actually export those Revit distances into SKM power tools if you're, if you're familiar with that electrical analysis program. So now you've got this third party analysis program that's a little bit more accurate because you can have it changing the distances of that while you're changing the distances in your VIN model. And then you can also click a button and have it draw a riser one line diagram based on the equipment sizes, the equipment types. You can have it draw that diagram based on the equipment level, where it is in the building. And all that stuff can be automated now that that information is all stored in that one place. And then for energy analysis, in the past we've had to create a construction model and we had to create an energy model. We had to create them separately. You, know, you update one, you update the other. With BIM, now that we're modeling everything in three dimensions, we have these spaces and zones um, defined within our model, we can now export that information to a third-party application that is more geared towards analyzing the energy. And then we can, the, the key word on this slide is the word shared. Now we have this shared model. We're no longer having this redundancy of, of work. We can now have it analyze the energy of the actual model that we're using. And the same thing goes for solar studies, where you might be uh, trying to optimize the orientation of the building to optimize its energy use throughout the year. Or you want to optimize daylight autonomy, where you want to see how much natural light you can get in there without having to use the artificial light to save energy throughout the year. 
and that can be done using the exact same model that we're using for construction, now we can use that same model for doing these other analyses as well. And then photometric analysis, which is lighting analysis. We want to see how much, you know, what the light levels are in different surfaces. Again, in the past, we would have, even if we, you know, had the, the project in CAD, we would trace it in CAD and we'd extrude it in 3D and then we'd have to build rooms or buildings and then we'd kind of have a, a rough shape of the building or, you know, kind of a, an estimate, a rudimentary model of the building to be able to do these analyses. Well, now that you can embed the lighting information, the photometric files, into the light fixture in your construction model, the image in the upper left here is actually straight in the construction model program. You can do a visualization to see exactly how those lights are going to perform in the space. And it's based on actual data from the manufacturer, their photometric files. Or if you wanted to do more advanced calculations where you want to do point by point photometrics based on reflections, refractions, and different things, you can export that model to third party applications such as the images on the, on the right here, which are a little bit more advanced photometric analysis programs where now you can, you can see exactly what the level is going to be at a specific point. But again, if you have a shared model, you're creating one model, you're exporting it to another application, but now, it, because we're not recreating this model, we have a little bit more confidence in the accuracy of our model, in the accuracy of our, of our calculation, because we're not trying to approximate. And then computational fluid dynamics. If you wanted to figure out how particles are flowing and mixing in a space, or you want to see how fast the air is moving throughout a space, or you want to see what the temperature profile is in a space. You know, all of these are inherently three-dimensional calculations where you, you have this three-dimensional space. Now, I added a word on here on this slide, it's future shared model. And I say that not because you can't share the model. We actually can share the same model to do these calculations. However, because of the complexity of computational fluid dynamics, um, we tend to simplify the model as much as we can. But BIM is still very key in this, is that with BIM we can visualize the space we can see what are the major obstructions that we need to account for, and then we can model those in a basic manner, where you know, some of these calculations might take hours to run, and if we tried to run them on an actual construction model that's got all these, these different surfaces, it might take us hours in the day. Now, it might be in the, in the future that we're using all one model to do this, because of you know, the advancement of technology and also the movement of computing power from desktops or local to servers or the cloud, you might see a little bit more of this popping up in the future. And also just along the same lines, some of these technologies, uh, whether it's flowmetric calculations or energy calculations, some of these are actually being integrated into the original construction document software. And so you will see in the future some of these things, as opposed to right now, we, we are relying on exporting, where we're still using the same model, but it is exported to third party applications. Some of these applications are merging or we're actually being able to be in the same environment without having to, to switch environments to create these calculations. And then in the end, we have the documentation that comes from a BIM project. Just like a standard CAD project, we're still dealing with two-dimensional paper. You're still going to give a set of paper drawings to a contractor to build from. And these paper drawings might have more isometrics. They might have more elevations or sections because they're a little bit easier to create in them. But in the end, it's still the same medium that's being passed to the contractor. We also have this model that was produced during the BIM process. The extent to which this model can be used by the contractor or the end user, the owner, depends on a few different things. It depends on the, the end user's ability to use that model, their training, and you know, their ability to take that information and continue to use it in their, in their practice. And also, it depends on, as Brian pointed out, the level of detail that was put into it in the first place. What, to what purpose was this model created? And so those are going to affect how useful that end model actually is. And then, as far as related to documentation, the parametric benefits that come from them is that, first of all, you have the, this idea of global changes that can be made to the standards. So you've got project standards, whether it's, it's line types, it's, it's symbol uh, size or the, the actual symbol. It can be uh, text types, you know, whatever 
remember again, you can change these once in the project, and then every single sheet that is referencing those project standards will be updated automatically. So you no longer have you know, have to go to each sheet and make those revisions. And then also with them, you can maintain a history of, of what has been issued or the revision, and all of that can be tracked internally through the software. And then another point, you can have sheet lists where you've got a list of your sheets. If you delete a sheet or if you rename a sheet, whether it's on the sheet or in the index, if you rename it on the sheet, it's automatically going to update the index. If you rename it on the index or renumber it, it's going to automatically renumber it and, and do it in the sheet. So this whole idea of parametric, these parameters being linked together in this database is very powerful. So I hope by now you've kind of got a better glimpse of the potential and the power that BIM is already providing to us from a design standpoint. But I do want you to have realistic expectations and also an understanding of some of the limitations associated with them. Because you have architects, engineers, and different people working on completely different networks with completely different uh, computers and computing power, you deal, you, at this time, most of the time you're still going to have what are referred to as linked models, where the architectural will have a model, the mechanical electrical plumbing will have a model, structural will have a model, and you link them together. When you link them together, you can see the geometry, you can see a lot of this information, but there are limits as to, I wouldn't be able to change the information in the linked model. There's, there's some data sharing that can't go back and forth. So if the architect has a light fixture in there, I can't just plug into it and change its, its, its power requirements and such. So there's a little bit of coordination that has to happen at that time, and that kind of goes back to the model element author. Who's going to be in charge of putting the light fixtures in there? And so it, it, there is some coordination that still has to happen because of those limitations. And then there are software and network limitations. Um, what I mean by that on the software side is there are there are features of the software that you would want that just don't exist yet. Or there are customized there's customizability options in the output that you want it to look a certain way that just aren't there. And they may have even been there in CAD production and you just don't have those options now. So there, there are some limitations there that you kind of have to learn a new workflow or learn to deal with you know, a new way to represent things. And then network limitation. Because we're talking about live data sharing between um, oftentimes geographically different locations where you've got the, you know, maybe users in different offices sharing one model, you have this data going to the model back and forth. If you've got a slow network, you can decrease performance. Or if you've got a large model, you can decrease the performance. So in general, this software is very complex and it does require training. Now before I go to the training, because it is a complex software, you are dealing with uh, large file sizes, you are dealing with um, additional hardware requirements, whether it's video cards, you're going to need to have better video cards, better processors, more RAM, to be able to manipulate these models real time and to be able to see what the designers are, are giving you. So just, just a note on that. And as far as training, you can't just hand someone the software and say, okay, now I want a BIM model. And they're going to just go ahead and hit the ground running. You know, especially if you're handing it to someone who's used to dealing with CAD, like we talked about the drafter who's used to things being represented as lines, they might get stuck at step one, like, wait, I don't, I don't know how this connects to a system. I don't know what I'm supposed to do with it. So that you have to have this training. So be aware that there is an investment that has to go in up front. But then there's also, as this technology is evolving, which is the next point, there's continued education because there are features that don't exist yet that are going to exist next year. And the evolving technology is not necessarily a limitation, but it's important to understand that this isn't a finalized or a polished product. This is something that's changing and something that the industry is going to have to evolve with and be willing to evolve with at the same time. And then more coordination time in the design phase is both expected and required by clients. Because everything's in 3D, we're now, you know, we're not having to coordinate mounting heights exactly. We're having to coordinate exactly how things are routed. And we talked about this push of some of the coordination time has been moved from the construction phase into the, the design phase, which, again, isn't necessarily a drawback, but it's something that we definitely have to understand that this hasn't necessarily translated into the time budget being extended in the design phase or for that matter, even the fee schedule that is associated with it, where you might have to allocate more fee and more time 
into the design development phase to be able to to have the benefits that are associated with the BIM model. And then, as always, garbage in, garbage out, apply. So just because you create a BIM model or just because you were given a BIM model, that doesn't guarantee you to what level of detail was created. It doesn't tell you how well the systems are coordinated, that the information is shared. So the tools are there to produce it, but if people don't know how to use the tools or aren't using the tools correctly, you can still get out a product that isn't necessarily going to, to provide the benefits promised.